Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral for our Passion Sunday Holy Mass with the Archbishop. Today on Palm Sunday, things are a little different. There's a procession into the church. So we're going to ask you all to go out to the courtyard with your palms. And the Archbishop will bless the palms in the courtyard. And then he will lead the procession back into the church. So you can exit into the courtyard through these doors here or at the back of the church on the left as well. So we'll ask you all to join us in the courtyard for our brief procession back into the church and outside the Archbishop will bless your palms. If you've not got palms in your hand, you can get them here or at the back of the church and there are some in the courtyard as well.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem as he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it, you will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying this colt? They answered, The master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed in the, is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. 
Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant, for who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials. 
and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? They replied. He said to them, But now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away, and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When he, a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. 
he went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence, and have, found not, and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But all together they shouted out, Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked. And he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children, for indeed, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, 
the wounds that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. I feel so much I need to begin with an apology to all of you who regularly come to this 11 o'clock Mass at the Cathedral on Palm Sunday, because you're about to hear the same homily you hear every year. <laughs> you know, they, uh, there was a, the story of the, the priest who he preached a homily, and 
uh, you know, everybody thought it was a great homily and commented on it. And they came back the next Sunday and Father gave the same homily. And they thought, oh, you know, it's a little embarrassing for Father. Maybe it's slipping. Or my mother used to say, the, the, the butter has slipped off the noodle. <laughs> they must be a Midwest thing. I don't know. Nobody seems to know that one out here. Well, they kind of pitied the poor man, and, when the, and then they came back the third weekend, and he gave the same homily again. So finally, when someone had the nerve to say to a father, he says, you know, you've given the same homily like three weeks in a row. He says, you know, what, what's wrong, or what's up, or do you, are you aware of that? He says, yes. Well, he says, you know, I'm going to keep giving it until you heed it and act on it. <laughs> so that's a little bit of the way I feel today. You know the, you know the message, those of you who remember. We enter in this week, beginning here with Palm Sunday, on the holiest week of the church's year. This year that we, this week that we call holy. And during this week, we celebrate the Paschal mystery, our redemption in Christ. The most important events that have happened since the dawn of creation. The events of our salvation in Christ that God has come to our rescue when we were captive and freed us from the power of the enemy, freed us from our sin, freed us from the grip of death itself and opened for us the way to eternal life for what we have been made. And we celebrate these events, my brothers and sisters, not just to remember them, not just as we might flip through a photo album from our childhood or watch an old home movie. We relive these events. We make these events present again, liturgically, so that we really are there in the upper room on Holy Thursday. We're really there at the table with Jesus and the apostles when he gives us the gift of the Eucharist and the priesthood, and that beautiful example of service and love symbolized by the washing of the feet, the mandatum. On Good Friday, we're, we're standing at the foot of the cross with Mary, his mother, with the other women, with St. John, the apostle, as he hands his life over for our salvation. And on Easter, maybe even at the Easter vigil, vigil we've got stamina, we're there at the empty tomb when the stone has been rolled away and we hear those words, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, he has been raised. But my brothers and sisters, what, what saddens me every year, quite honestly, is that, I'm just gonna say it, so few of us participate in these liturgies of Holy Week. We don't come to these things. And I think we as Catholics, we're forgetting our story. Our story. The love story of God's love for us in Jesus. And I think we need to be reminded of this story. And I think we need to immerse ourselves in the story again. You know, we want to feel closer to God. We want to understand what God has done for us in Jesus. We want to understand God's place in our life as we search and doubt and have fears and anxieties. This is where we encounter him. You know, I, I, I've said many times, I said in a little video I did this morning earlier from my chapel, we just heard the reading of the Passion, right? We'll hear it again on Good Friday, the God Passion according to St. John. This is going to sound awful, but I sometimes wish the church didn't read the Passion on Palm Sunday. I wish that we ended today just with the glorious and triumphant entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem so that later in the week we could watch the drama play out. Instead, we sort of hear the whole story today of what's coming this week. And so we can, we can leapfrog then to next Sunday, to Easter Sunday, because we just heard Jesus buried. And we can come back next Sunday and he's risen without living the days in between, really living them, entering in, celebrating these 
incredibly powerful and beautiful liturgies that make this mystery really present to us and touch our hearts deeply. God wants to touch you in your soul. Will you let him by opening yourself to this? And this year I'm going to issue a challenge. Okay, I've been a, I've been a priest for 32 years pretty much preaching the same thing every Palm Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to issue a challenge this year. I want you to think to this week. I want you to think about Thursday evening when we're celebrating the Mass of the Lord's Supper here, or maybe in your, if you're sitting at your home parish, your home parish, or a, a church nearby. Think about that time. What do you have to do at that time that's more important? Now, I realize some people do have things that they can't get out of, they have to be responsible for, work, other commitments, I understand. But for most of us, probably not. So what do we have to do on Thursday evening that's really more important and better? What about Friday? During the celebration of the Passion of the Lord when we venerate the cross, whether it's in the afternoon or the evening, depending on your parish. What do you have to do at that time that's more important, that's better? Just think about it. I'm not trying to be overly harsh. I just want to challenge you a little bit as your shepherd, as your spiritual father, to think about it. Let God touch you. He wants you. He thirsts for you. Jesus will hear those words from Jesus on the cross in John's gospel this coming Friday during the singing of the Passion. These good people over here are working their tails off to get ready for these liturgies in our choir. And we will sing the Passion on Friday. And you'll hear those mournful words from the mouth of Jesus. I thirst. My brothers and sisters, Jesus thirsts for you. He thirsts for your love as he pours out his love on the, on the altar of the cross, as he pours out his precious blood, as he pours out that love and mercy, he thirsts for your love. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
trusting in God's mercy, which he has shown us so powerfully through the passion, death, and resurrection of his son, Jesus. Let us make our needs known in prayer before him. For the universal church to be united in proclaiming Jesus as Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the mercy of Jesus will come down upon the whole world to bring salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer, that they may be united to the redemptive suffering of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that by the passion and cross of Christ, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters who have died, that they might receive the fullness of life with Christ. Let us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people who cry out to you in their need. In your mercy, hear and answer us as always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, 
we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you and in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chal chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our merciful and faithful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and Peter, my assistant bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down and bless Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>